don't think that the water heater is supposed to be doing this. I think it fair to say that most of the folks who are watching this video won't mind a hopefully brief excursion into some backstory information that you really should have before you watch the rest of this video. But, if you happen to be one of those people who would mind, or you think that I'm an incurably long-winded person, I am pleased to inform you of a feature on your computer screen that you may not have noticed, and that is a number of suggested videos, any of which you can go and click right now to watch them, and hopefully you'll enjoy them better than this one. Likewise, here on YouTube, there is an amazing search function. You just click on it, type in what you want to see, and voila! Such is the magic of the Internet. For all the rest of you, hello there everyone, UXW Bill here once again, and as you can see, our water heater here has definitely failed with a leaky tank. Now back in 2004, we installed this Reliance 606 model water heater to replace the carrier day and night unit that was destroyed in the basement flood. I don't know how old that carrier unit was, but I would say that it had to be anywhere between 35 and 40 years old. The thing never missed a beat. You couldn't run it out of hot water no matter what you did. It was a great water heater, but unfortunately the burner assembly was damaged by the flood and parts simply could not be had at the time. Now we were all rather distraught from the after effects of the flood and having to clean everything up. So what we purchased for a replacement was this, an inexpensive water heater, and as it turns out, it only had a six-year warranty on the tank. Well, here we are in the year 2013, and I guess you could say that in, at least when you consider how long this thing's manufacturer's warranty was, that it really didn't do bad because it was only warranted the last six years, and instead it lasted almost ten. Fortunately, this water heater lives in the basement of our house, and no damage was done to anything when the tank failed, as the water simply ran across the laundry room floor and ultimately into a waiting floor drain. Sitting in its partially open shipping carton is our new replacement water heater, a 50-gallon unit manufactured by Richmond, a division of the Ream Corporation. Now, for many people, the Ream Corporation needs no introduction as they are a very high-quality manufacturer of furnaces, air conditioning equipment, and even water heaters. Our goal here is to replace the water heater that we had with a much better quality unit and something that is more energy efficient. This unit has a faster recycling time, it also has better energy efficiency, and instead of just a six-year warranty on the tank, it has a 12-year warranty. Unfortunately, last night, my dad and I prepared to install this thing, and right off the bat we ran into a snag as the connections on the top of it are completely different from those on our old water heater. And apparently it's too much to hope. There we go, it finally focused on it. <laughs> so what we did, rather grudgingly, and because the leak was slow enough that it didn't seem like it'd be a huge problem, we relit the old water heater and temporarily restored it to service with the idea that anyone who needed hot water could simply come down here and turn the valve on. Now to avoid any potential issues with pressure buildup in the system and a potential steam release or even some kind of an explosion, when we were done, we also made sure to turn the thermostat down to near its lowest position. In an effort to be helpful, I left a note on the kitchen table explaining what any parties who were desirous of having hot water should do in order to get it. Now you can pause the video at this particular point and read the note if that's what strikes your fancy. I do suggest that you watch this part of the video in high definition in order to be able to make out the small details. And please don't look too closely at my absolutely horrible penmanship. Although this note was intended to provide useful advice, sometimes the best thing that you can do when you're faced with a bad situation is to maintain a sense of humor. Hence the reason for my humorous illustrations on the front of the note. Well, as it happens, my mother got up this morning on her way to work, and she came downstairs, apparently saw this note, and while I realized that what she wrote, she wrote in the sense of, if mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy, I just busted up laughing when I flipped it over and took a look at it. Once again, of course, 
you can pause the video to read this if you would like to. And again, I suggest that if you are not watching in high definition, that perhaps you may want to do so. You can also see that Furhead made a brief little commentary around here, though exactly what he's referencing, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> Some of you have undoubtedly figured out that my mother's sense of humor and my own track very closely to one another. Now here's the part that I don't quite understand, and I would readily welcome any further information or points of clarification that you and the viewing audience have to offer. I'm standing down here in my grandfather's basement right now next to his Ace Hardware Americana Series water heater. This water heater is at least as old as I am. It was here when I grew up in this house as a child before more of my brothers came along and necessitated moving to a larger place of residence. In all the years that this water heater has been here, it has never had an issue with reliability, and other than some seepage from the uh, blow-off valve on the side of it, it has never leaked. Now I understand very well that most any water heater made within halfway recent times contains a so-called sacrificial anode rod that is attacked by a chemical process instead of the tank in the water heater. That part's not a question for me. But the thing that I don't understand is how older water heaters seem to last such a very, very long time, and yet these newer ones don't last so long. Now, I have to admit that my sample size is not very large. After all, I've only been witness to one water heater that has failed with a leaky tank. But it seems that I see a lot of relatively new water heaters that have been retired and set out for the trash or scrap collection after just a few short years in service. And that's the kind of thing that I have to admit, I absolutely don't understand. Now, of course, this water heater definitely has a sacrificial anode rod in it as well. However, I have no reason to believe that it's ever been replaced. The threads on it look to be untouched, as does the head of the fastener that holds it in. Likewise, there is a tuft of insulation around it that appears to have never been disturbed. So, my question to you is, is it a matter of reduced quality being employed in the manufacture of new water heaters, or is there some other reason why they don't seem to last as long as they used to? The optimist in me hopes that there's some other reason why they don't last as long as they used to, but I'm almost afraid that I know the answer, as with so many things. The assembly and build quality has just been cheapened to the point where they don't last as long as they used to. And of course, as I mentioned, the carrier day and night water heater that served prior to the basement flood in 2004 had to be every bit of 30, 35, maybe even 40 years old. And I know that in all the time we'd lived there, about 20 years at the time of the flood, it had never had anything done with its sacrificial anode rod either. And yet again, it never showed any signs of leaking. On the off chance that someone does question the veracity of my reporting, here's a look at the tank of my grandfather's water heater. Now this was not, by my guess, a particularly expensive water heater when it was new. The tank was manufactured by State Industries for Ace Hardware. I know that much. I was previously unclear on exactly when this unit might have been manufactured, but the Energy Guide sticker is still stuck to it over here, and over in the corner I see February 80 which tells me that this water heater was at least prepared for shipment sometime around February of 1980, and therefore it has been in service longer than I have been alive, by approximately two years. <laughs> but as you can see, if you look at the base of the tank, the parts of it that can be readily seen, and I believe the other parts as well that the camcorder cannot as readily see, are rust-free and undamaged. The only sign of leakage that there has been you can see it on the concrete floor, although there was water recently in this basement that might muddle things a little bit, is from the pipe leading down from the pressure relief or blow-off valve in the side of the water heater. So there you have it. Now we're just about ready for the big fire up, but before we can do that, you should always test for gas leaks. And a good way to do that is to mix up a solution of soapy water and paint it onto all the gas fittings that you have worked with before you actually go ahead and light anything up. I'm going to saturate those fittings again with my soapy water. 
I don't see any bubbles. I don't see any hissing. Me either. So, watch out. All right. Get out of your way there. You got your spray no. nozzle turned off. Spark in the there we go. It's lit. Well, we just filled our tank and evacuated all the air from the system, or at least as much of it as we could with this low-lying faucet down here. <laughs> I don't know whether you folks out there in YouTube land can hear it or not, but there is a very low rumbling coming from the burner and everything is lit up. So now it's just a matter of time until we have hot water here once again. Before I go ahead and close up this video, I must say that whoever designed the packaging for this water heater had excellent taste in automobiles. But they really needed this model, and not the sedan, to take their new water heater home. <laughs>